Welcome to the discussion on accounting for corporate liquidation and reorganization. At the end of the module, we will be able to describe the accounting for corporate liquidation and reorganization and to prepare a statement of affairs. So before we proceed with corporate liquidation, uh, on, on our last uh, discussion videos, we have uh, discussed accounting for partnerships, specifically accounting for partnership liquidation. So basically, uh, what you have done in uh, a partnership liquidation is essentially the same with that of corporate liquidation. The difference lies on the presentation of the statement of affairs and the liquidation uh, on on accounting for uh, corporate liquidation and reorganization we will be uh, introduced the concepts of fully secured creditors partially secured creditors and the free assets the recovery percentages so uh, these are new terminologies but they are essentially the same with that of accounting for partnership liquidation so uh, why uh, corporate liquidation happens? So uh, it is said that the most common reason why corporations liquidate is because of insolvency. So we have discussed insolvency in our uh, previous discussion videos. Insolvency means that the total liabilities is greater than the total assets of a company. Therefore, if your liabilities is greater than your total assets, you are encountering a financial struggle or a difficulty in uh, paying your liabilities with your present assets. So according to the Insolvency Act of the Philippines, uh, we can classify insolvency as either voluntary or involuntary. So voluntary as the term implies means that uh, the corporation voluntarily applies for a petition to a court of law to be discharged of its liabilities. So, ito yung nag-file ng bankruptcy, ganon. Involuntary, however, is uh, happens when three or more creditors of the insolvent corporation file a petition to a court of law for the adjudication of the corporation as insolvent. So, bakit nag-file itong three or more creditors? Because um, there is a possibility na na mag, uh, mangutang pa uli itong uh, insolvent corporation. So, ang tendency niyan, yung free assets ay madidistribute into, into more creditors. Kaya nagpa-file itong three or more creditors ng, uh, ng uh, petition for to a court na uh, i-declare as insolvent yung corporation kasi at, at existing creditors pa lang, hindi na kayang bayaran, paano pa kung continuously nag-ooperate, baka magdagdag lang yung uh, liabilities niyang insolvent corporation na yan. So, there are, these are the two distinctions, the voluntary and involuntary. So, these are uh, mere uh, theoretical, uh, cons uh, theoretical discussions lang ito. So, kung merong ganyang mga type of questioning, um, this is more of a theory questions. So, let us distinguish insolvency with uh, illiquidity. So, what is the difference between the two? So, when we say illiquidity, this is an inability to pay off debts because of shortage in cash. So, for a period of or a short-term period of time, may, uh, wala kang cash na maibayad on your liability. So, that is illiquidity. However, insolvency is worse because... Uh, it, this is the total inability to pay off debts because of the lack of assets. Sa, in, sa illiquidity, wala ka lang, uh, short ka lang sa cash, pero pwedeng meron kang assets like equipment or building. However, in, in insolvency, wala ka talagang pangbayad na uh, kahit na as, or kahit na equipment or land, wala. Walang cash, walang land and equipment to pay off the debt. So, uh, insolvency is worse than illiquidity. So, there are possible recourse of action for a for an insolvent corporation which is 1. Liquidation. Yung, this liquidation has been discussed in, uh, in the previous uh, video, yung accounting for partnership liquidation. What is the definition of the liquidation? They are essentially the same. And second, reorganization. Yung liquidation, you stop the operations. Yung reorganization, uh, meron kang mga processes na nireorganize or nireestructure for you to be efficient in your operation. So, let us look at now first yung liquidation muna. 
determination of the business operations or the winding up of the affairs, the process by which assets are converted to cash, liabilities is settled, the remaining amount are distributed to the owners. So what are what is the measure, measurement basis for like accounting for corporate liquidation? Essentially, the, the PFRSS are looking at a going concern entities. However, because this is already a termination of the business, we are not looking in it as a going concern entity because uh, the entity is a liquidating entity. So, ibig sabihin, the PFRS do not apply to this. So, ano ang uh, i-apply natin? So, for liquidating entities, the appropriate measurement base is the realizable value, which is the estimated selling price less the disposal cost for assets and the expected net settlement amounts for liabilities. So, kung magkano ibebenta yung assets, yun ang measure basis, me measurement basis niya, yung net realizable value and for liabilities, yung net settlement amounts. So, we prepare statement of affairs and statement of realization and liquidation. So, what is a statement of affairs? It shows the financial position of a liquidating entity. So, ina-identify dito yung mga assets na, na ibebenta, tapos yung mga liabilities, kung paano natin yan isa-settle, at kung may matitira pa yung claims doon sa ating mga owner. So, let us... Uh, Look at one, yung uh, first, yung assets, and then next natin later on yung liabilities. So one is the assets pledged to fully secured creditors. So as the term implies, the assets of the corporation has been pledged to fully secured creditors. These are assets with realizable values equal to or greater than the expected net settlement amounts. So basically, ang ibig sabihin lang nitong assets pledged to fully secured creditors ay the amount of the assets na nagsisecure doon sa utang ay mas mataas. So, let us take a look for example, the building. Building with realizable value 1 million pledged a security for a bank loan of 800,000. So, ang utang mo ay 800,000 pero ang naka-collateral or naka-security or guarantee for that uh, loan is 1 million. So, ibig sabihin, yung asset ay naka-pledge doon sa mga fully secured creditors. Ibig sabihin, mas uh, equal to or greater than, mas malaki o higit pa yung um, asset na nagsisecure doon sa utang mo. Yung reverse naman, when we uh, look at assets pledged to partially secured, or in this case, the, uh, the assets pledged is less than the amount of the claim or the loan. Let us take a look, for example, the equipment, 500,000 ang value ng equipment, security daw yun para sa loan na 800. So, ibig sabihin, meron ka pang 300,000 na unsecured uh, liability dyan. Next, free assets. The concept of free assets, uh, these assets, these are assets that have not been pledged as security for liabilities, so hindi siya naka-pledge. And these also include the excess of assets pledged to fully secured creditors over the related liabilities. So when we say free assets, these are not security to a loan or to a liability or to a claim. In addition to that, yung excess, kasi diba, if you take a, take a look at uh, at example number 1, yung sabi dito, the realizable value daw ng building ay 1 million, tapos ang loan ay 800,000, yung 200,000 na excess ay considered as a free assets kasi wala namang uh, restriction on that 200,000. Next, let's proceed with the liabilities. Uh, Liabilities with priority and liabilities without priority. So, yun lang naman ang titingnan mo dito because basically, yung item number 2 and item number 3, this has already been discussed on the asset portion. So, ang tingnan mo lang dito is the unsecured liabilities with priority. This is important because um, uh, more of the problems ay laging nag ay nagtatanong ng unsecured liabilities with priority. So, kung hindi mo alam ito, uh, baka ma... Um, magiging mali yung computation mo uh, all throughout. So, these unsecured liabilities are liabilities that although not secured by any asset are maintained by law to be paid first before other unsecured liabilities. So, ito, wala tayong security 
na i walang naka-pledge do dito sa mga liabilities na to, walang naka-collateral, pero these are mandated by the law to be paid first. So dapat unahin ito among other unsecured liabilities. So kung mayroong unsecured liabilities, dapat ito ang maunang bayaran. Ano-ano ito? One, administrative expenses. Example, are the filing fees, attorney's fees, referee's fees, trustee's fees, and other the recourse of the insolvency proceedings. So, so ito yung mga related doon sa pag-wind-up uh, pag wind ng affairs noong corporation. Yung process ng pag-liquidate na. So, lahat ng mga administrative expenses related to that. Dapat bayaran. Next, the unpaid employee salaries and other benefits. Kasi kung hindi mo yan babayaran, you will be charged of involuntary servitude. Kung baga, uh, pinagtrabaho mo sila without the, the appropriate compensation. So, dapat bayaran yan. And next, taxes and assessments. Of course, uh, uh, the, the government is protecting the the its funds or the, the treasury. So, dapat bayaran yung kung ano man yung mga taxes na, na dapat bayaran dyan. So, these are the prioritized uh, unsecured liabilities. Let's proceed with item 4. So, lahat daw ng liabilities that are not classified under 1, 2, and 3 will fall under unsecured liabilities without priority. Okay. Let us take a look at the illustration of the Statement of Affairs. So, ABC has filed for voluntary insolvency and is going to liquidate. The ABC's Statement of Financial Position prior to the liquidation is shown below. So, binigyan ka niya ng Statement of Financial Position. As of December 31, 20x0, you have current assets, non-current assets. The total is uh, 3.7 million. So, meron kang cash, AR, NR, inventory, prepaid assets, current non-current assets, yun land, building at net amount. So, nakabawas na dyan ang, ang accumulated depreciation. Same is true with the equipment. The liabilities and equity nandyan, accrued expenses, current tax payable, accounts payable. So, dito pa lang, tingnan muna muna. These are all liabilities. So, kung titingnan mo, alin, alin ba dyan ang unsecured liabilities with priority? So, tingnan mo kaagad yung item kung andyan ba siya. Accrued expenses, uh, ano klaseng expenses ito, hindi pa natin masabi. Kasi, wala, walang naka-indicate kung anong klaseng expenses ba ito. So, baka merong provision on the additional information uh, on the latter part. Next, yung tax payable, ito yun. This is, a prior, un, this is an unsecured liability with priority ito, taxes and assessments. Accounts payable, may nakalagay ba? Wala. So, maybe 1 million is a unsecured liabilities without priority. So, let us uh, proceed with the, with the other items. The non-current liabilities, may non-current down note payable, secured by equipment, loan payable, secured by land. So, if these are secured liabilities. So, tingnan natin later on kung uh, ano yan, partially or fully secured ba yan. So, titingnan natin doon sa uh, value noong uh, asset na nakasecure sa kanya. So, meron daw tayong capital deficiency of amount 171,000 negative. Kasi, ang share capital natin, 500,000, ang retained deficit natin ay negative 671,000. Total liabilities is an equity, 3.7 million. So, meron tayong additional information from item A to J. So, the following were determined for the start of the liquidation. So, tingnan natin yan isa-isa later on as we progress with the discussion. So, the requirement is to prepare the statement of affairs as of January 1, 20x1. So, okay. Step 1, we have to restate the assets and the liabilities. Kasi, kung... Uh, we have to restate the values to its realizable value kasi nagli-liquidate na tayo. Therefore, kung magkano mo yan ibebenta ngayon, uh, yun ay uh, dapat yun yung measurement basis natin ngayon because we are not going concern. We are uh, a liquidating entity. So, therefore, i-state natin siya sa realizable value niya. So, i-plot mo po lahat. This is the step 1, yung identification of the realizable values of the assets and liabilities. So, i-plot mo po lahat ng assets and liabilities and then equity mo uh, with their book value. So, i-identify lang natin isa-isa, 40, 220, 100. So, yan, naka-indicate. Indicate natin, 
yung total for liabilities uh, indicate din natin isa-isa okay yung cash natin okay 40,000 Okay, let's take a look at the cash. Accounts receivable, 220,000. Tingnan natin on our illustration, 100, 530, and then 10,000. 100, 530, and then 10,000. The land and the building is 2,500,000. Okay, the equipment is 300,000. Then meron tayong uh, yung mga liabilities natin dyan, 221,000, 350, and 1 million. Okay, the note payable, 302 million. Okay. Okay, hanggang dyan ka na lang muna. Okay, the deficiency is one, negative 171. So, therefore, balance tayo dyan at 3.7 kasi pinlat mo lang naman. So, let us take a look at the additional information para ma-identify natin kung magkano realizable value. For cash, meron kayang, uh, magkano kayang realizable value niyan, it should be the same. Kasi ang cash hindi naman niya nagbabago ng values. Uh, so, uh, cash is at 40,000. Accounts receivable. Okay, let's look at item A. Only 76% of the AR is collectible. So, ibig sabihin, 220 times 76%, yun lang ang makukollect na natin. So, 167,200 is the realizable value of AR. Next, notes receivable. Meron bang additional info related to notes receivable? Wala. So, therefore, there being none, 100,000 will be forwarded as the realizable value of the NR. Okay, let's take a look at item B. Ang sabi dito, 10,000 interest receivable. Interest is receivable on the note. So, meron kang receivable, note receivable na 100,000. So, yaan ay nag incur ayan ay nag-earn. I mean, nag-earn yan ng interest. So, nag-earn daw ng 10,000 interest yung note receivable na yun. So, therefore, this is an addition to your realizable value. So, i-indicate natin dyan, interest receivable, 10,000. So, bakit po dito yan in-indicate? Dahil related yan dun sa note receivable. Kaya, pinagsunod na natin. Okay, next. The inventory has, a, has an estimated selling price na 420 and estimated cost to sell 10,000. So, kung ibebenta mo daw yan ngayon, 420, pero meron kang may incur na cost na 10,000. So, 410,000 ang total realizable value, net realizable value ng inventory. Kaya 410 ang forwarded dyan. Next, the prepaid assets are non-refundable. The prepaid assets ay ibinayad mo na, pero kung magli-liquidate ka daw ngayon at mag-terminate ka ng operations ngayon, ay hindi mo na daw yan mare-refund. So therefore, wala na yung value. Kasi hindi mo naman pala pwedeng i-refund kung magli-liquidate ka ngayon or mag-terminate ka ng business operations or mag-wind up ka ng affairs. So therefore, zero na ang realizable value ng prepaid assets. Let's take a look at next, land and building. Bakit ito pinagsama? Because of the package price na inindicate at item E. The land and building daw may fair value na 2 million and 800,000. So kung titingnan mo, uh, uh, according to the PFRS, it should be measured at this, yung 2 million and 800,000. But because you are a liquidating entity and you are expecting to sell the both assets at a package price of 2.6, therefore, yaan ang realizable value na i-indicate mo dyan. 2 million 600,000. Kasi kung magkano mo yan ibibenta at time zero, at time now, I mean. So, 2.6 ang forwarded sa land and building. Kasi naka-package price yan, kaya pinagsama yung land and building dito. Next, the equipment uh, is measured at, uh, ang sabi dito, has estimated selling net selling price. So, nakabawas na dyan ang cost to sell. Ang price daw ay 200,000. So, 200,000 ang realizable value mo dyan. Total, 3,527,200. Okay. Next, okay, accrued expenses, is there any provision related to the accrued expenses? Item, okay, skip mo muna yung item G, okay? Dito muna tayo sa item H. Ang sabi sa item H, the accrued expenses include accrued salaries of 25,000. 
So what is the effect of this? The accrued expenses include accrued salaries of 25,000. Remember, when we are discussing this, uh, nung pinapa-identify ko sa'yo kung nasan dyan yung with priority, hindi mo pa ma-identify itong accrued expenses kasi napaka-general ng term. Pero ngayon, in-identify na niya na 25,000 of that is an accrued salary. So, 25,000 ang unsecured liability with priority. Okay? So, yun lang ang sinasabi dyan. Okay. Next. Sir, paanong gagawin doon? Uh, ibabawas ba namin sa realizable value? No. Because item H only specifies kung alin doon ang unsecured liab with priority. Pero, uh, ang realizable value niyan remains at 221,000. So, i-carry forward mo 221,000. Next. Current tax payable. Yung current tax payable, may binabanggit ba dyan? Wala. So, there being none, 350,000 has been forwarded. Accounts payable, 1 million. Uh, mayroon bang binabanggit dyan? Sa additional information, there being none, forward 1 million to your realizable value. Next, the note payable is, uh, mayroon bang binabanggit? None. There being none, 300,000 has been forwarded to, uh, to your realizable value. Same is true with the loan payable, 2, uh, 2 million. Okay, next. So, okay na tayo. Sa G, hindi pa tayo okay. Sa H, okay na. Let's proceed muna with I. 15,000 interest is payable on the loan. Kung kanina, yung receivable mo, nag-earn ng interest, ngayon naman, yung utang mo, yung loan payable mo, nag-incur naman siya ng interest. So, therefore, dadagdagan mo ang yung liability, yung interest payable, 15,000. Kaya po siya nandito, kasunod siya ng loan payable. Okay. Item J, sabi, all the other liabilities are stated at their expected net settlement amount. So, tama yung ginawa natin because kung magkano daw yung uh, naka-indicate sa kanila, their book values ay, ay yun na ang kanilang set, net settlement amounts. So, let's uh, go back to item G. Yung administrative expenses expected to be incurred in the liquidation process. So, itong administrative expenses na to, this uh, will be incurred on... Uh, in the liquidation proceeding. So, yan ay idagdag mo po as part of your, kumbaga, payable or, or estimated expenses mo yan. 30,000. For you to get your um, uh, estimated deficiency. So, paano ba natin map makukuha? After natin, step 1, we restate the assets and the liabilities. So, na-restate na po natin lahat. Ngayon, after mong ma-restate ang total assets mo, 3,527,200 and the total liabilities and expenses na 3,916 nakikita mo na mas malaki pa rin ang iyong liability compared to your assets. So therefore, meron kang capital deficiency na 388,800 which is the balancing figure here. So nakita mo liability mas malaki 3.9, ang asset mo 3.5 lang. Therefore, kulang ka ng 368,800. So, this is the problem now. Papaano mo i-distribute yung, um, yung asset mo to your uh, to the claims? Papaano mo ipang babayad yung asset mo sa yung claim? E eh, kulang. So, papaano ang order of priority? Papaano ang uh, percentages? So, we look at that. So, let's proceed with the next Okay, step 2 is we identify the classification of the assets and the liability. So, kailangan i-identify muna natin, uh, siyempre titingnan mo yung mga nakasecure na mga assets, si, ano ba yung mga prioritized na unsecured liabilities, ganun. So, let's take a look. Uh, the assets pledged to fully secured creditors, kung matatandaan mo, the land and the building, uh, ay nakasecure sa loan payable. So, 2,600 ang realizable value ng land. Ito yung package price, yung na-identify natin kanina, yung package price ng land and building. The loan amount is 2 million, and may interest payable yun, nag-incur nag na kasi ng interest, kaya 2,015,000 na yan. So, magkano ang may sobra ba? Yes. Kasi nga, fully secured yan, mas mataas, uh, pwedeng equal or more more than or equal ang uh, ang amounts. So, 2,600,000 uh, minus 2,015,000 is 585,000. Sa assets pledged to partially secured creditors, 200,000. Wala na po tayong available for secured kasi lahat yun ay para sa uh, partially secured lang. 
okay uh, you have to take a look at the free assets You have to take a look at your free assets. Sing total niyan ay 727,200. Okay? Uh, then, let's proceed with the liabilities. Ang total ng uh, unsec uh, available for unsecured creditors ay 131,200. Okay, ito kasing mga free assets, yung cash, AR, NR, interest receivable, inventory, ay um, lahat yan ay wala namang sec uh, secure. So therefore, yan ay lahat available for unsecured creditors. So matatandaan mo, di ba, ang free assets, magagaling yan doon sa mga assets na walang, na hindi, uh, walang sinisecure na claim at yung excess doon sa fully secured creditors. Total mo ay 1,302,200. The liabilities naman, tingnan natin, una, yung with priority. Di ba na-identified natin na ano-ano yung mga may priority? One is the administrative expenses. Next, yung mga employee related, yung salaries and benefits. And then third, yung mga taxes. Yung administrative expenses, 30,000. Yan, na-identify na natin yan uh, under additional information. Next, yung accrued salaries, yun na 25,000. Ito yung uh, accrued expenses ay include, included daw doon yung 25,000 accrued salaries. So, ito na yun. Yung tax payable na 350,000. So, total unsecured liab with priority ay 405,000. Okay, next. Yung fully secured, 2 million, tsaka 15,000, 2 million 15, yan yun. Yung total liabilities. And then the partially secured, yung note payable, 300,000. Tapos ang nakasecure sa kanya, 200,000 na, na realizable value ng equipment. So therefore, meron pang matitira dyan na 100,000. So ano mag, mag, anong mangyayari dun sa 100,000? Magiging part na siya ng unsecured liab without priority. Sir, bakit ito po ay hindi naka-forward naka dito? Because this is unsecured liab with priority. Ang ina-itemize natin dito sa column na to is the unsecured liab without priority. Ito naman, hindi naman kasi siya unsecured. This is fully secured. So, itong 100,000 ang mag ang papasok sa category ng unsecured liab without priority. Next, yung unsecured liabilities without priority as determined on the Financial position, the statement of financial position, yung unsec accrued expenses, 221 yun, di ba? Pero 25,000 doon ay accrued salaries, which is unsecured liable with priority, eto yun. Kaya ibawas mo. Therefore, 196 doon sa accrued expenses ay without priority. Then, yung accounts payable ay without priority din. So, therefore, the total unsecured liable without priority, including the excess in the partially secured, is... 1,296,000. So, 1,296,000 ang total niyan. Okay, let's take a look at step 3. It estimated recovery percentage. So, in the Sipali board exam, in, in more of uh, the review, laging mayroong question related to this. So, ito yung medyo tricky questions. Ang tinatanong in the Sipali board exam is the, the, the amount of the free assets what is the amount of the unsecured liable without priority and the unsecured liable with priority and more of the recovery percentage. Kasi itong recovery percentage, kapag nasagot mo ito, ibig sabihin, you have a, you already know the basics of the, of accounting for corporate liquidation. So how do we compute this? So, at this point, sabi, we can compute for the estimated recoveries of the creditors and owners since we have identified a deficiency in step 2. The unsecured creditors without priority will not be paid in full. So, wala naman kasing problema if the total assets will be greater than the liabilities. Hindi na natin kailangan mag-compute ng estimated recovery percentage kung mas marami yung assets. But, but according to our earlier uh, discussions, di ba, the most common reason of of a corporation um, of a corporate liquidation is insolvency. Ibig sabihin, 
mas marami talaga yung cases na kakaunti yung, yung assets na pambayad doon sa kanilang liabilities. So, how do we compute? The formula is the net free assets divided by the total unsecured liabilities without priority. So, how do we compute for the net free assets? It is the free assets minus the unsecured liab with priority. So, kung mali ka, ang computation with your unsecured liab with priority ay mamamali na ang iyong sagot on your recovery percentage. So, in this case, the total free assets is 1,312,200 minus 405,000 which is the unsecured liab with priority. Ito yun, na-compute natin dito. So, net free assets mo, 907,200 divided by the total unsecured liab without priority, yung 1,296,000. Yung pinagsamang excess sa partially secured at saka yung total ng ng without priority talaga. So, therefore daw, pag kinumpute mo yan, the estimated recovery percentage of unsecured creditors without priority is 70%. Sir, ano po ang gamit ng 70%? The 70% will be used as a basis in computing for your uh, kung paano babayaran yung mga unsecured liabilities without priority. So, let us take a look at the estimations. Yung estim unsecured with priority, 100% yan mababayaran. Yung fully secured, 100% din kasi fully secured. The partially secured, yung 200,000, mababayaran yun kasi yun yung equipment. Plus, 70% lang nung 100,000. So, 270,000. Yung unsecured without priority, 70% ng amount, total amount nun. So, 196,000 times 70%. 837,200. So, you should be arriving at 3,527,200. So, tingnan mo, yun ba yung total assets na meron ka? Yes. Kasi yun lang yung kaya mong i-distribute. The shareholders will be receiving none because, di ba, sa order of priority, dapat unahin muna yung outside creditors. Kung mapapansin mo, yung unsecured creditors mo nga dito, yung without priority, 70% lang ang nareceive. Alangan may ma-receive ka pa as the owner. Dapat wala. Dapat maunang mabayaran itong mga outside creditors mo. So, that follows the order of priority in the marshalling of the assets. Okay, let us take a look at how we break down yung estimated recovery. So, pwede kasing itanong sa'yo dito ay, in the board exam, pwede tanong sa'yo dito is how much is the share of the partially secured creditors on How much is the share of the partially secured creditors on the free, total free assets of the company? So, the answer is 270,000. So, ganun. So, this can best be explained by uh, this item, yung, yung pagkaka-breakdown. Yung 300 minus 200 is 100,000. You multiply it with the 70% recovery is 70,000. You add back the realizable value of the collateral security to get the estimated recovery of the partially secured creditors. Okay, let us uh, take a look at step 4, which is the statement of the affairs. Okay, the statement of affairs will just uh, present to you the book values via your realizable values. So, i-identify mo lang dito yung fully secured, partially secured, and then your free assets. Same is true with your liabilities and equity. So, I think that uh, I have to end the discussion for uh, accounting for corporate liquidation. Please continue to... Uh, for uh, to the next video for more of accounting for corporate liquidation. Thank you.